This is a special edition of Nightline. Nowhere to hide. Good evening, and we are dedicating our show tonight to a story of cyber harassment so extreme that the woman who was targeted says it nearly led her to suicide. It started as an online flirtation and grew into a ceaseless campaign of threats and public humiliation. Tonight in their first television interviews, you will hear from both the victim and the man she accuses of trying to ruin her life. Saturday, 4.05 a.m. <laughs> 1.02 a.m. I won't get you, no matter what you do. These are some of the voicemails after she found her phone number. In our connected era, Courtney Allen provides a brutal cautionary tale. He targeted our home. He targeted our neighbors. He tried to get us fired. This wife and mother from suburban Seattle says what started as an online flirtation led to a dogged, diabolical campaign of cyber stalking. Oh. Um, I was having nightmares that my husband was dead, that my son was being taken away from me. She says playful banter in the chat room of an online video game curdled into a campaign of terror with intimate videos sent to her colleagues. Police called to her home to investigate charges of child abuse and a tsunami of threatening calls, voicemails, emails, and texts. You don't think I just run away from this you created? And this is the man Courtney and her husband blame, Todd Zonis, a 45-year-old from Arizona. I don't know why you hate me so much. I'm actually afraid of what he'll do. If I kill myself, maybe that'll be the end. This is a story of public humiliation and private torment. I had introduced this maniac into the lives of my family, and it's all my fault. All of it's my fault. The story begins in suburban Seattle. Courtney for? Allen was a married, stay-at-home mother. I That's don't. when her marriage began to change. Steve was not home a lot. I felt abandoned. And then having no time, you know, to talk to friends or anything, I really just felt very secluded. She started playing an online game called Grepolis, set in ancient Greece. Players use the powers of the gods to protect themselves and forge alliances with other virtual players. While playing the game, Courtney met Todd Zonas. And at first, what was that like? He was um, just rude and crude, but I thought it was very funny. Then they began emailing. Did the relationship start to get pretty close? Yes, we started flirting, um, and then that turned to s texting, um, sexting. And, um, and that's mainly how the relationship started to evolve. Courtney was living a double life, a married woman with a child, having what she calls a secret online affair. So even though you never met him face to face, did you feel like you really knew him? Yes, I felt like he was my best friend. Um, I told him very private things about myself, uh, things that I really didn't tell other people. He replaced my husband. Then she says things turned sexual. He had this idea where we should exchange some illicit videos of, of, of ourselves. So he sent me several and then asked for one in return, and I, I obliged. So you must have really trusted him. I did, implicitly. It's a big risk. I can see it in your face that, that you wish you hadn't taken that yes. risk. Yes. <laughs> in September of 2013, her husband, Stephen, discovered the relationship. It was devastating. You don't ever think that your spouse would do that. He confronted me and said, let's work on this. She agreed to end the affair. But she didn't. Courtney instead hid her interactions with Zonas inside a password-protected tablet. Did you feel guilty about it? Yes. Months later, her husband Stephen caught her again. Disappointed but unwilling to give up on his marriage, Stephen decided to do something drastic. Through various searches, I found uh, this website, Marriage Builders. The website says to end the affair, you must expose it to everyone around you. Family, friends, and especially the lover's spouse, the site's author says. While controversial, overall, the advantages of exposure far outweigh the disadvantages. And that, he says, is just part of his complete plan for marital reconciliation. So what did you do at that point? I told my parents what was gone, and then I sent individual um, Facebook messages to about 40 of our common friends. I feel it is very important to inform you that Courtney has been participating in an internet sexual affair which has shattered my heart. How did you react to that? I was not happy. <laughs> I was furious. 
But Stephen took it even further, emailing Todd's wife and even Todd's parents. He is having an internet affair with my wife. This involves texts, emails, and shared recorded videos of masturbation. Were you at all worried about what kind of blowback you might receive? I never imagined that would have happened. According to the Allens, they had poked a hornet's nest. Todd had become furious. He focused it on my husband. Steve's bosses started receiving anonymous emails. Saying bad things about me, lies about me, trying to get me fired. Then they say a death threat to Stephen's grandmother. And she called me up and said, a man threatened to burn down the house with us in it. The floodgates had opened. Hundreds of emails started pouring in. The next year and a half was an all-out attack on our family. Where are you? Are you okay? Are you just hoping I fade away so you can enjoy twisting the knife? God damn you, why won't you talk to me? Followed by more emails at 9.30, 9.42, 10, and 10.34. I just, just grasped me at straws. If there's gotta be a way for me to get rid of this guy in a nice way where he'll, he'll leave me alone. Then five more emails. What the f are you joking? You are cruel. Have you even thought about me at all in the past month? The emails would continue like this, angry and abusive. I'm coming up there. I hate you and hope you get what's coming to you. I did nothing wrong. I'm not going anywhere. Then came the voicemails. And now it's all just payback and fun. There's no job either one of you guys can have that I won't know about and be there. Steven says he started getting so much harassment at work that he had to quit his job. He involved me. It's his fault, not mine. Did you ever feel resentful? Like she had created this problem? I always thought, she's not doing this. He's doing this. He could have chosen not to do it. They changed their phone numbers, but every time the calls kept coming. One evening, Courtney received more than 200 text messages. It's just like a, like a switch is flipped. Like, it just he's just gone crazy. Oh, my God. Then, this video. I don't know why you hate me so much. Seriously, I've never been more serious about anything in my life. I mean, I just want to know how you are. I want to know what you're feeling, what you're thinking, what you're doing. I truly care. I mean, I don't know how I hurt you. I never meant to. But the cyber torture would only get worse. The explicit video of Courtney masturbating was then posted to YouPorn and sent to her bosses and Facebook friends. According to evidence presented by the Allens at trial, the Facebook profile used to send that video was accessed from the Zonus's IP address. Courtney and Stephen decided it was time to call the police. And the police said, I don't know what to do for you. I've never seen harassment as bad as this in my years in the force. This is what you're hearing from the cops? There's nothing they could do? Police officer had told us that because he's in Arizona, our hands are kind of tied. Stalking is stalking, whether it's, it's through a computer or a phone in person. And certainly this offender broke many, many laws. And who do we go to when, when we're the victim of a crime? It's, it's the police. And there, there should be a, an obligation for our law enforcers to actually enforce the laws that we have. So the Allens were relieved when the police knocked on their door a few days later. And the detective turns and says, I'm hearing a welfare check for your son. You've been reported for child abuse. I'm terrified. I'm like thinking, my son's going to be taken away from me. At that point, I break down. And I'm like, we've got a stalker. And I think that this is his doing. He told me something was going to happen, and this is it. The Allens finally went to the FBI. An agent took their case. But now the death threats were rolling in. One saying, you and Stephen are garbage, and he's going to die. Was the FBI ever able to do anything to protect you? They said, well, be prepared to protect yourself. That's what they told you? That's what so they told me. You had documented death threats and from a traceable email account, right? They were not all traceable. This was because whoever had been harassing them had been using Tor, a program which makes tracing the email and identifying the sender impossible. After months of brutal harassment with no end in sight, Courtney says she was considering taking her own life. So I got an email and it said, better for you if you just die, if you just kill yourself. And all this guilt came crashing down. You know, if I kill myself, maybe that'll be the end. Maybe he'll stop. The Allens finally decided to take Zonus to court, but their case would be a difficult one to prove. How do you prosecute if somebody's done such a good job of covering their tracks? Well, in a case like this, where there's just 
non-stop harassment, they always mess up. Coming up next, we go face to face with the man the Allens say turned their life into a living hell. She describes your relationship as more emotional, more romantic. Yeah. Is that true? No, that's not true at all. Todd Zonas says some of the emails accessed from his IP address uh, and the calls to police were done by Courtney's husband, Stephen, pretending to be him. So is the voice not you? No, 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 the voice is me, but but it's, first of all, when was it done? It wasn't done when they said it was. When we come back, the rest of his surprising story. That's the bottom line. Courtney and Stephen Allen say they endured a year of cyber harassment. You don't get to just run away from this you created. So inventive and so relentless. He involved me. It's his fault, not mine. And if it happens from here on out, it's his fault. That it led to a cover story in Wired magazine. The Allens say it was all at the hands of this man, Todd Zonis. So we went to meet him face to face. We just landed in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, we're here to have a sit-down interview with Todd Zonis. Very interested to hear what he has to say. Hi. Hello. His wife Jennifer came along, and right Sorry, from the really jump, it was tense. You okay? No. <laughs> She's not real happy about it. Is there anything I can do to help? Say that I didn't do anything. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we'll try to make it as brief as possible then. So let's just start at the beginning. H how did you meet Courtney Allen? Uh, I played an online game for the first time in my life, and she was a player as well. This is where the stories diverge. Todd says he and his wife simply befriended Courtney. So you were involved in the correspondence? Yeah, she sent me gifts. She made um, little tags for the things in my garden and stuff like that. But she describes your relationship as more emotional, more romantic. No, that's not true at all. Why do you think she's saying all this? Oh, it, that's, that's really easy. <laughs> that's... Yeah, we turned her down. They allege Courtney propositioned them for sex. Yeah, her husband, um, he's a very, well, you met him, right? He's a very controlling, um, abusive kind of guy. At least that's how he was described to us. That's what she told us, anyway. Yeah. We asked him about the explicit images of Courtney sent out over Facebook. The explicit videos were sent to friends of the Allens from a Facebook account. And according to the forensics that the Allens legal team put forward, that Facebook account was logged into from your house. So is that, was that not you? Out of the, no, that wasn't me. In June of 2015, Stephen and Courtney Allen took Todd Zonis to court, suing him for invasion of privacy, infliction of emotional distress, and defamation. But proving that Todd was responsible for the cyber harassment would have been nearly impossible if it were not for the handful of emails their lawyers were able to link to the Zonis' IP address. Zonis denies sending the emails. Allen's lawyers presented emails at trial. They say they came from your personal email and your IP address. This is February 20th, 2015. Um, okay. We were just curious, is this coming like, strictly from the Wired story? No, okay, these, are from the, these are from the data. Oh, okay, because okay, that, that was, yeah. Um, I don't think we need this. Well, and we're, we're, just, we're just wondering why we haven't heard anything about our claims. That's, I mean, well, we know all about theirs. So the reason why I'm presenting evidence that they've put forward is because I, I do need to give you a chance to respond to it. Any claim you want to make, go ahead and make it. They gave us a drive containing what he says was proof of his innocence on which we found very little that wasn't already presented in court. Todd repeatedly stressed that he isn't even good with computers. Literally, I'm a computer moron. I mean, <laughs> that's all we own, right? I've never done any of this before. So, no, I had no involvement in any of that. So if there's a diabolical mastermind here, it is not you you're saying, it is Stephen. I can't even send email properly, no. Uh, it, that's a joke. And those voicemails? I'm telling you, passion is passion. I did nothing wrong. I'm not going anywhere. So is the voice not you? No, no, the voice is me. I'm not doing We're, this was, again. Okay. But yeah. this is you saying this. This is your voice. But we didn't. No, do we it. didn't. And I'm not going through another trial that again. One, yeah, that one can and actually. And that's what this feels yeah, like. All so of these, undone. all of these could be explained if they're taken in context. But if it's your voice and you're saying it's your voice, what does it matter when it came? Uh, 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 what does it matter when it came? Well, does it matter that he attacked me? three or four months before any of this happened, does that matter? If it does, then time scheme matters. They say they never got a fair trial. 
Their main argument? The judge wouldn't let them include testimony about losing out on their inheritance after Steve Allen exposed the alleged affair to Todd's parents. I mean, and in my case, that's $2.1 million, plus the home that I grew up in. We talked about it all the time, and all of that was gone. I was trying to contact them. They, they wanted nothing to do with us. You haven't heard any of this stuff, and there's a reason. Okay, They didn't want you to. There's a reason that you weren't provided with any of this stuff or that it's not available. That's and why I started my blog, which, by the way, we get death threats on now. I mean, and those some of IP them are traces, very... Uh, yeah, they're very Very personal. Either way, we, you know, my wife's very concerned about that. She goes to work in fear now. <laughs> I mean, Stop. okay, okay. Anyways. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Can I get you a tissue or something? Yeah, yeah I'll get you. Sure. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry, man. Did you get enough? Yeah. 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 It's going to be all twisted, but. I know. The jury ultimately found the Zonas is responsible for intentional invasion of privacy, intentional infliction of emotional distress, and defamation to the sum of $8.9 million. Just knowing that people could get past what I had done and look past it and realize that this behavior is not okay from him, that what I did isn't cause to try and ruin her life. You know, there's those are his actions. They're not placed on me. I may have helped with ruining our lives by providing that information, but that's not my fault. It's him and his actions. Todd Zonis has already filed an appeal. We didn't have a stalker until we had one. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, you may think you're fine now, but something can happen and you've put all that stuff on the internet. Yeah. And people- it, it could be there for decades. For Courtney and Stephen Allen, this ordeal feels far from over. Uh, Do you worry, though, that speaking to the media could ramp things back up? It is a possibility. We think it's important that people understand what can happen. You don't have to be a celebrity. You just have to meet the wrong person, put your trust in the wrong person, and this can happen. And we will be right back. You've just watched a harrowing tale of cyber harassment that evolved into a real-world invasion. Almost all of us are susceptible to this type of harassment and stalking, but you can find tips on how to keep this danger at a distance at abcnews.com. We want to thank you for watching Nightline tonight. As always, we're online 24-7 on our Nightline Facebook page. Thank you again for watching, and good night.